I am having a casual Friday. Friday? Thursday? It's not Friday, is it? I don't know what day it is, but it's casual. Hello humans, my name is Dale Kingsmill, and today I'm back with another myth for you. This is, uh, I, it's really cold, I'm so cold, I decided that I'm having, I'm having a casual day, I'm wearing my dressing gown, I'm wearing my pyjama pants, and I'm wearing some bed socks. Can you see the flowers on the bed? Bed socks, bed socks, bed socks, bed socks. I don't know if you guys got a good enough view of my pyjama pants. Pyjama pants! This is, like, maybe a little dangerous. But hey, what can you do? I got a lot of practice standing on spinny wheelie chairs in my last year of high school. It's just, it's so cold lately and I haven't had a winter in two years basically because I've been going over to the States and having double summers and I miss it. It's so cold, you guys. Cue laughter from the Canadians as soon as they find out that it's actually, it's like eight degrees Celsius. But it is cold for me. So anyway, another myth. How is my battery dying? This has happened every week since the curse. What is happening? All right, we're gonna try to do this anyway. So last myth video was Pandarius, and I mentioned briefly uh, that Tantalus shows up in that story, just just for a little bit in order to mind the golden dog, the, the stolen golden dog. Retriever, I missed the golden retriever joke again. Golden retriever, ha, funny joke. But due to that, I thought may as well go into Tantalus and exactly who he was today and why we shouldn't necessarily feel too bad for his eternal punishment that he's so famous for. Tantalus was born into incredible privilege as the son of Zeus and the nymph Pluto. Spelt differently to the Roman Pluto, the name of Hades in Roman mythology, but it's basically the same meaning, meant riches, which is exactly what Tantalus was. Rich as. In true nepotomistic fashion, I don't know if nepotomistic is a word, nepotism is a word, let's hope nepotomistic is. In true nepotomistic fashion, Zeus invited Tantalus to, uh, to dine with the gods on Olympus. He, he sort of had a welcome invite up to Olympus to hang with the hang with the deities, as it were. And the dude got basically everything he wanted. Anything he asked for, the gods were bound to give to him. And they were getting pretty sick of it. So when next Tantalus sat down at the dinner table of the Greek gods and asked for some ambrosia and nectar to take with him, the gods flat out said, No! You've had enough! No! But he was a spoiled rich dude, so he took it with him anyway. He stole it. He stole the ambrosia, he stole the nectar, and he took it down to, down to the mortal realm with him to share with all his mortal buddies. Yuck it up. And while he was having his little frat party down there, he started gossiping all about all the gods' private business, divulging all their little secrets. Which, I mean, I personally, I, I mean, I feel like the Olympians kind of deserve that, but it does serve to help you understand why they were so mad. But that wasn't all! Oh no! No, no, no. Tantalus thought, you know how I can make this worse? He, in way of apology, invited all of the Olympians to come down to his place for once and he would feed them. He invited them to his own grand feast. Maybe this will make it up to you. He said, I'm sorry I stole the ambrosia. I'm sorry I stole the nectar. I'm sorry that we all drank and ate it when that's something reserved for the gods. But let me make it up to you with some fine whining and dining. That's a lot of rhyming. Zeus thought, Okay, all right, son, we'll let you make it up to us. And so they all did. They came down to dinner at Tantalus's place. But for goodness knows what reason, Tantalus served up his son as the feast. He cut him up, he put him in a stew and boiled him, and he served him up to the gods and said, ta-da, a meal for you all. Thinking that he could trick them. Why he needed to or wanted to trick them, he's rich, he could just afford food. Just give him a cow, dude! Tantalus, why? But all of the Olympians, who were, you know, gods, knew that it was the dude's son. They knew, they were like, Guy, this is people. Soylent Green is people. And we're all totally horrified by it. 
Not a one of them even touched their spoons. They all just sat staring at Tantalus agape, not sure exactly how they were supposed to react. All except for Demeter, who was at this point still entirely distraught about the loss of her daughter Persephone to Hades in the underworld. And so she was super distracted and actually did eat a little bit of her meal before realizing what was going on. She accidentally ate the boy's shoulder, which is, it's a little bit unfortunate. What? What is it? What is it, you guys? What are we all staring at? What's going on? What? Is it something on my face? Is it... What is it? But Zeus, after giving Tantalus a severe what the hell is wrong with you, kid, speech, got all the Olympians to put their heads together and try to figure out the puzzle and piece the boy back together. Sans shoulder. No shoulder. Once they kind of had a vaguely human-shaped piece of meat from out of all their stews, they stuck it back into another pot of boiling water in the hopes that this would bring him back to life. But thankfully they're the gods, so it did. And up from the cauldron rose Pelops, fully formed once again, except for his shoulder. But Demeter and her faces fixed that. They, they crafted a new shoulder out of ivory and just kind of reattach it where the meat used to be. Sorry, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry everyone. <laughs> and as Pelops rose from the cauldron and had his new shoulder affixed, Poseidon looking on thought, oh shoot, he's hot. And so Poseidon whisked him away to Olympus for a while under the guise of, oh, I'm going to train you how to use chariots properly on Olympus. Totally, that's totally what's going on. And they lived there for a bit until Zeus got mad at Tantalus again for his involvement in the whole dog incident, and he kicked Pelops out, but it's fine, Pelops went and he founded the Peloponnese, as you may have guessed, based on, you know, his, his name being Pelops. And so, upon his death, Tantalus was quite justly punished. He was made a permanent resident of Tartarus, and his particular individual eternal torture was that uh, Tantalus was to be placed into a pool where the water would rise up and lap at his chin, but if he ever tried to bend down to drink from the fresh water, it would recede and wash away from him. Standing right underneath some luscious fruit trees that grew all sorts of delicious, ripe-looking fruits that hung just low enough that they would brush against his head, but if he ever tried to reach up to take some of the fruit, a gust of wind would blow the branches up and out of his grasp, condemning him to eternal thirst and hunger. Tantalizing him, if you will. That's where we get the word from. Bada boomba. That was strange, I take it back. So that's the story of Tantalus. He was kind of a bad guy. I hope that you enjoyed the story. If you did, I would love it if you could hit the like button down below. It really helps the video out a bunch. Basically all forms of interaction like that, engagement with the video helps it kind of appear higher up in search terms. So that's a great thing that you can do, liking, leaving comments, sharing. Speaking of sharing, you can share this video on your favorite social media website. I myself am on many of those social media websites. You can find my links in the description below if you'd like to follow me there. Or as I always say, I love it if you share the video just by telling someone that you know in your everyday life. Say, hey, you like mythology, you might like these videos. And of course, if you haven't already, then you can subscribe to this channel for more content on the regular. I do lots of storytelling here. I tell lots of mythology stories or I retell fairy tales sometimes. Those tend to be every second week and in between I do just all sorts of different weird nerdy stuff. So stick around, check it out. I know that I myself would love to have you stay. Apart from that, I can't think of anything else I need to say, so I do believe that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Email this to your grandmas and I will see you some other time. Fun fact, I've got my Goonies shirt on, Goonies Goonies, at Supernova. Just a little while ago I went to see Sean Astin talk with a bunch of my friends. We, we went to his Q&A thing. And um, he told anyone who wanted to be sworn into the Goonies to stand up. And I was, I was up. I was in a flash. No hesitation. I was the first person on my feet. And basically, I am an official Goonie now because I was sworn into the Goonies with the Goonie Oath by the leader of the Goonies. So, just saying.